Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. His mercy endures forever. One thing is everlasting and His mercy is everlasting. I would like to thank all of you for remembering my mother and uh, she has reached India safely and she was very happy and sent uh, love and greetings to you all. Although she didn't come for preaching to Kuwait, but uh, she just came to uh, visit me and minister to me. And, uh, but uh, the Lord uh, used her uh, in an amazing way. And uh, actually, I had uh, uh, exhausted her very much <laughs> because uh, she, she got invitation from uh, the church in the, that uh, city side. And uh, it was having more than 1,000 members. So not only she had to preach there, then afterwards the people will wait for individual prayers. So another one hour, uh, two hour service, after that another one hour, people will be asking for prayers and she would uh, pray. So it was totally exhausting for her. And uh, during the last uh, Sunday, she was really very exhausted. Uh, that's why she was uh, slowly speaking because she was preparing a lot of uh, vegetables and uh, uh, curries for me, around 8 to 10 vegetables and curries she prepared so that I can eat. And around 28 chapatis she had prepared. Thank God. Hallelujah. So I, uh, I, I felt very sorry that, see, I couldn't take her to many places because uh, it was so busy because I was going to my office and uh, in fact some holidays were there, but still uh, it was so, uh, ministry was there, we have to minister in uh, various churches and then she had to uh, prepare herself and prepare the uh, food also and she is very good uh, cook, she prepares very uh, tasty food. So I had a very uh, tasty uh, time with her, thank God. And uh, I want to uh, thank the Lord and pray that the Lord as uh, promises Psalms 91 verse 16. It says, Psalms 91 verse 16, With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So let's all pray that uh, the Lord will give her long life. Long life because he has promised, With long life I will satisfy her. Or, and also, beloved, how true the... Uh, I was just wondering while he, she came, She had never thought of preaching or ministering to thousands of people here. But the Lord used her in an amazing way. A per persons, people, big, big people that I don't know, they called me over the phone and they asked, can your mother preach? It was really an amazing, uh, amazing, outstanding work of the Lord. And I was reminded of Psalms 92 verse 14. Here it says, Psalms 92 verse 14, a beautiful, wonderful verse. They shall still be a fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Beloved, if you are worried about your old parents, oh, they are becoming older. If you are burdened, they are growing weaker and weaker. What will happen? You can lay hold to this promise. My mother is old, but God, the word of God is being fulfilled. They shall still be a fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. While she was retiring, she got multiple job offers. So she couldn't stay for three months. I was requesting, please stay. People are so blessed. I couldn't take to other many churches, other churches also. But she told, no, 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 for one month only I can stay because I have to rejoin my college. And when she, I uh, called her yesterday, she was telling that in the college, everyone was missing her. Without her, there was uh, very feeling, they were feeling very lonely, very dull. Praise God. How true the word of God is. After retirement, still she is working. Maybe you are thinking after retirement, what will happen? What will be my future? What I will do? The Lord. The Lord will arrange everything. And He shall fulfill. They shall still be a fruit in the old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you Jesus.
let's beloved uh, today topic we will shall meditate is how jesus christ is the rebuilder restorer in this life so many times we oh, get discouraged we break our hearts our health our finances they just break up in our uh, office place in our oh family life there are so many troubles trials tribulation and so many times we get heartbroken but jesus christ is the rebuilder he is the restorer if we read jeremiah chapter 31 verse for a beautiful verse it is given jeremiah chapter 31 verse 4 says again i will build you you shall be rebuilt o virgin of israel again i will build you and you shall be rebuilt amen probably your dreams have broken your thoughts have broken your future all may look dark but lord says again i will build you you shall be rebuilt probably you have lost your job probably you have lo- lost your biggest client you the business has slowed down worries might be oh coming like a flood what will happen to my future what will happen to my job what will happen to my family what will happen to my children the lord says again i will build you you shall be rebuilt you shall be rebuilt beloved if we read in the bible genesis chapter 26 verse 1 says there was famine in the land there was no rain every crop planted was dying because there was no rain but in the verse 12 and 13 in the midst of famine isaac the child of god sowed his seed praying in tears oh lord it is not raining every Everybody, everybody is saying, oh, it's famine, no hope. Ma, we are in a hopeless situation. But the God, God of Isaac, the God who, our uh, God of Abraham who blessed was looking at the tears of Isaac. He sowed in the land. And the same year, he reaped hundredfold, hundredfold, hundredfold in the midst of famine. You might be wondering, oh, economy has slowed down. There are no better job opportunities. What will happen to my business? What will happen to my family? I am facing, oh, so many financial crises, so many financial strain. The God of Isaac is your God. The God who blessed Isaac in the midst of famine. He sowed his seed and the Lord Jesus blessed him. Bible says in Psalms 33 verse 18 and 19. Another beautiful verse it is given. Psalms 38 verse 18 and 19 says. Psalms 33 uh, 33 verse 18 and 19. Here it says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear Him and on those who hope in His mercy. Why, beloved? Why? The eyes of the Lord from the heaven, His eyes is every upon every one of you, upon every brother, every sister. He's looking. What a privilege. What a blessed people we are. The eyes of the maker of heaven and earth is looking. Is looking. What for? Verse 19 says, To deliver their soul from death. To keep them alive in famine. Praise the Lord. Probably you are facing hopeless situation. You are facing the darkest hour of your life. Your future may look very dark. But the Lord promises in Psalms 18 verse 28. The Lord Jesus will enlighten our darkness. Whatever the darkness, darkness of sorrow, of shame, of sickness might be there. But the Lord says, I will enlighten it. Because Jesus Christ is the light of the world. When he comes, when his presence comes, all the darkness will depart. When my mom was there, I could uh, experience the love of a mother. And I remembered 
when I was small child, when I was in India growing, and whenever I used to become sick, when I used to suffer with jaundice, typhoid, or sometimes fever, or stomach problem, and there would be nights where it would be very hard for me to sleep, she will sleep beside me. And she will be giving me medicine after taking me to the doctor. And after that I will be sleeping. But still, because of high fever, high pain, I will get up in the night. And suppose 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock I am getting up. She will immediately touch me. And I used to wonder, whenever I wake up, she touches me and says, how are you? How are you feeling? Anything you want? You want water? Oh, I realized that she's not sleeping. She's always looking at me, at her son, sleeping at her. She's not sleeping. But whenever I'm sleeping, oh, but she's waking. She is praying, Lord, oh, take away the disease, take away the fever, take away the jaundice, take away the typhoid from my son and give to me and heal him, heal him. That's the love of a mother. That's the love of a mother. Bible says our Lord loves more than a mother. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15 and 16 says, Can a mother forget her sucking child? Yes, she may forget, but I will never forget you. I will never forget you. The Lord, your Savior Jesus, is oh, never sleeping. Psalms 121 verse 4 says, The Lord never sleeps. The Lord never slumbers. My mother never used to sleep when I am sick. Whenever I used to wake up, she will be there. She will touch me, ask me, Son, how are you? How are you feeling? Do you want what? That was the, that is the love of an earthly mother. But the look at the love, the greatest love of Jesus. He died for every brother, every sister. He shed his last drop of blood for every one of you. For every one of you, he shed his blood. He has purchased you with his own blood. With his own blood, never think you are alone. When you are in sorrow, when you are in pain, when you are in affliction, when you are depressed, when worries surround you, what will happen to my family? What will happen to my health? Our doctor have told I have diabetes. Doctor have told I have last stage cancer. Doctor have told your kidneys have failed. Jesus understands. Jesus feels the pain. Another beautiful verse that is found in Isaiah chapter 63 verse 9 says, Isaiah chapter 63 verse 9 says, how Jesus Christ feels the pain. It says, Isaiah chapter 63 verse 9 says, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love, in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bore them and carried them. My beloved, when you are suffering, when you are afflicted, Jesus is afflicted also. Jesus suffers the pain. When you cry, Lord, I'm not able to sleep in the night. This kind of worry, this kind of tension is coming. I'm having my back paining. My head is paining. Oh, in my stomach, tumor has developed. My kidneys have failed. What will happen? Doctor have given up the hope. What will happen to my mother, to my father who is sick? Oh, my brother, my relative who is suffering in the hospital with an incurable disease. Jesus understands. Jesus feels the pain when you cry, Father, it's paining. 
It's burning. In the night, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, if you cry, the Lord says, He never sleeps. He never slumbers. Psalms 121, verse 4, He never sleeps. He never slumbers. Another verse, beautiful verse that is found in Ephesians. Oh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30 says, how Jesus loves us. How Jesus cares for us. Ephesians Chapter 5, verse 30 says, Amen. For we are the members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bone. When you part of your flesh, of your bone, maybe your back is paining. Maybe your toes, maybe your oh, joints are paining. Jesus understands because his body is joy with your body. When you cry, when you call upon the mighty loving name of Jesus, just as a mother, when a small child cries, her mother, he must, she might be in kitchen or bedroom or in bathroom, but as soon as she hears her child cry, she comes running. She comes running. What has happened to my child? What has happened to my child? Why he is crying? Why she is crying? Beloved, the Lord Jesus loves you more than a mother. When you are crying, Oh Lord, I am worried. I am not able to sleep in the night. This kind of worry about my family, about my children, about my future, about my job are coming. Oh, what will happen? The Lord Jesus will come. Lord Jesus understand. And he will wipe away your tears. He will remove the worry. He will remove the anxiety. He will remove all the depression. He will encourage you. He will encourage you. I would like to share a very thrilling testimony. Few days back I received a call from a brother. He said, brother, I have arranged a prayer meeting. Can you please come? Because I am calling so many non-religious people also. So if you come, it will be a blessing. Nowadays, I am not going to many places. But he requested me, please come, it will be a blessing. You please come. I said, okay, I will come. Then I went there. Then the, uh, there were two prayer requests. The major prayer request. One brother had lost job for four months. He was not having a job. And he was having his wife, his mother-in-law and a little daughter and he has lost job for last four months he is applying he is searching for job but no job because recession in his particular he's, he said uh, he's from IT field and the market is uh, in recession so there are no good job openings he's not able to get a job for last four months and only two months are remaining his company has said we will Oh, cancel your residence and send you back. And it was oh, very hard to pay for the rent of the flat, for taking care of her small child. And her mother-in-law is also with them. And next prayer request was of the mother-in-law. She was 70 years old and she was limping. She was having excruciating pain in her legs. And she told, please pray. This leg pain is so severe. I'm not able to walk. I'm not able to go to the bathroom. Oh, I have, oh, I have come here with great difficulty. They asked me, brother, can you please pray? I started praying, Lord Jesus, it's impossible, but you can turn the impossible into possible. You are the God who blessed Isaac in the midst of famine. You please bless. For last four months, he doesn't have job. His company have given two months. Oh, only that we will cancel your residence and send you back. He has to take care of his wife. How is we will be paying his rent? I cried. And while we were crying and praying, the Lord Jesus promised, tell him. I could hear his voice. Tell that brother. Amidst all the people I told him, Lord Jesus is telling Within one month, you will get a job. Within one month, you will get a job. And then I prayed for that old auntie. 
Lord Jesus, when you were this in this world, when the leper cried to you, Lord, have mercy, you touched the untouchable leper, the one whose flesh was torn apart, was coming apart, he was looking so miserable. You can build, you can heal, you can heal. And I prayed, Lord Jesus, lay your wounded hands, nail pierced, bleeding hands, Lord, healing hands, right now, and heal, heal, in the name of Jesus. Like that we prayed, and the meeting was over. Then, uh, uh, after uh, six days, I got a call from that brother. Brother, please come. There is a Thanksgiving meeting. I didn't ask what is the Thanksgiving meeting. In their house, the one who had come who didn't have a job. So when I went there to their house, they uh, then uh, first thing uh, that brother testified. Brother, after only one, around uh, uh, three, four days, I got an interview call. And they said you can join within one month. And they have given me the appointment letter. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus hears the prayer of the afflicted. Whenever you are in affliction, Psalms 22 verse 24 says, Psalms 22 verse 24 says, For he has not despised, nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. Beloved, Lord Jesus will hear. Probably the people of your, the world, your relatives, your friends might forsake you. When you are in trouble, when you are sick, they, you, they won't even bother to call you. Ask you, how are you? They will turn their faces. But Jesus Christ is the faithful God. He is the promise keeping God. He looks at the afflicted to remove their affliction. Praise God. That brother is still in Kuwait. Hallelujah. He got the job. Hallelujah. What Jesus Christ says, he fulfills it. Hallelujah. Not of my ability. It is the love compassion of Jesus that wants to comfort the broken hearted because Jesus Christ came to heal every broken heart every broken heart Psalms 147 verse 3 says Jesus Christ came to heal every broken heart Psalm Isaiah chapter 61 verse 2 says he came to comfort all who are mourning all who are weeping to wipe away their tears Isaiah chapter 61 61 verse 4 says the Lord will turn our mourning into dancing, into joy. Hallelujah. And he will bring out beauty out of the ashes. Beauty out of the ashes. Probably you are sitting with a burdened heart, with a sickness. Oh, my mother is sick. My father oh, has become old. He is not able to walk. Remember, claim that promise. They shall bear fruit in their old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing oh, to declare that the Lord is my rock and his upright. There is no unrighteousness of me. And then that uh, old uh, auntie, she also testified. As soon as the meeting was over, she went back to her home and all the pain from her leg had disappeared. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is God. Jesus is the healer. Probably you might be facing impossible battles in your life. But the Lord says, battle belongs to me. me. To me, I will fight your battles. When you say, oh, there is mountain of problems, mountain of trouble. Oh, it uh, looks that I am surrounded by darkness. It looks I am surrounded by oh, worries and anxiety. The Lord Jesus will remove all the anxiety, will remove all the burdens to bring light out of the darkness, beloved. What a good Jesus we have. Therefore, cheer up my brother. Cheer up my sister. You have a Jesus who builds the broken life. Who builds the broken body.
bodies. Your marriage might be broken. Your relationship might be broken. Jesus Christ will rebuild you. Will rebuild you. Oh, he will restore you. Whatever you have lost. You might have lost your finances. Probably you have invested in some share that has gone down. Or in some property, the value has become oh lower and lower. You might be lamenting, Lord, I have lost my finances. I have lost my wealth. But the God of Job is your God. He will restore all you have lost. You will regain. You will regain your lost honor. May I might be people have hated you. Might be people have oh uh, criticized you, have despised you, rejected you. But the God of Joseph, he brought him from pit. At the age of 17, he was thrown in the pit by his own brother. His own brother rejected him, despised him, hated him and threw him in the pit. And he was taken as a slave to a Gentile kingdom. No hope. No hope. He was in a hopeless situation. But thank God, he didn't become discouraged. He was faithful and the Lord was with him. Genesis, in the, if you read, it says the Lord was with him. And he blessed. He blessed out of... Then at the age of... Uh, 30, the Lord took him from... He was falsely accused. He was falsely accused. He was innocent. But he was put in prison. For uh, the, uh, 17 to 30, around 13 years, he was as a slave and 2 years in prison. Uh, so 11 years as a slave and 2 years in prison. He was lamenting. Beloved, you might be also having, oh, I'm having a hard job. For long six years, I'm working in the same job with no increment, with no increase, with no bonus, with no good opportunity. And uh, will I be able to get a release? Will I be able to get a better and, uh, oh, bigger job? The Lord says, even if you lose a job, don't worry, brother. Don't worry, sister. The Lord Jesus will give you a bigger Better job, exceedingly, abundantly above all that you ask or think because Jesus Christ is powerful. Jesus Christ is powerful. He won who blessed Joseph at the age of 30. He was brought into palace. Oh, the Lord made him the ruler. Praise the Lord. God of Joseph is your God. God of Joseph is your God. Therefore, don't be discouraged. Don't be, give up in life when adverse circumstances, when, oh, problems come like a mountain, or like a ocean floods, they come running. Troubles, trials, sickness, tribulation. Don't give up. God of Joseph is your God. You will regain. He will lift you from your pit. From the prison. Oh, he will lift you to the palace. Cheer up my brother. Cheer up my sister this night. We have a God of hope who loves you. Who loves you. Who loves you. Hallelujah. He loves you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I would have shared many other things, but uh, time is up. I will uh, finish it. Uh, don't ever be, uh, become discouraged. Remember, God of Isaac is your God. God of Job is your God. He will restore all your losses. Oh, hallelujah. God of Joseph is your God. Whatever dark situation you might be, never lose hope. Jesus Christ will rebuild you. Rebuild you. First Chronicle chapter 4 verse 9 and 10 says, there was a man called Jabez. He was born in sorrow. Bible historian, scholar says, when he was born, his father died. So his mother was in pain and he bore him in pain. Verse 9 says, and she kept the name Jabez. The one who causes pain. The one who causes pain because she had lost her husband. She had become a widow. But did Jabez become discouraged. Oh, he didn't cry. It's my faith. It my, I do, it, it's my fortune. What will happen? I am cursed. My own mother hates me because I am the cause for her sorrow. She has lost her husband. She has become a widow at a young age. 
But no, beloved. He cried to the God of Israel. The one who can turn the defeat into victory. Failures into success. Hallelujah. Mourning into joy. Sickness into health. Misfortune, unfortune, curse into blessing. Because there is power in the blessings of God. He cried, Lord, bless me. Bless me indeed. Let your hand keep me. Let your hand protect me. Enlarge my territory. I may not cause pain. And verse 9 says, Jabez became more honorable than his brother. Probably his brothers might be more educated, more talented. But the Lord says, oh, people call him the one who causes sorrow. I will make him at the same place to shine. He became more honorable. And if we read First Chronicles chapter 3 verse 55, a city was named after Jabez. The Lord made him so honorable. Oh, he oh made the people to honor him and made the city name to be called Jabez. God of Jabez is your God. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7 says, Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Instead of your shame, wherever in your job, in your family, your relatives might have hated her. Oh, he's uh, reading Bible. He's praying all the time. He's going to the church. They might hate you. Even your oh, Christian friends, people friends might hate you. Oh, he's always preaching. He's always sharing his testimony. Oh, he's always uh, propagating. Oh, amidst all email, YouTube, everything, Facebook, he's doing all the uh, preaching, preaching. They might hate you. They might become jealous. But the Lord says, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. The Lord will lift you. The Lord will cause you to be a source, a channel of blessing as he caused Jabez. Hallelujah. Remember, he loves you. He died for you on the cross. He has purchased you with his own blood. He loves you. He died as an orphan. There was nobody to comfort him. Therefore, he understands your loneliness. When you cry in pain, when you cry in loneliness, he understands because on the cross, he was all alone. There was nobody to wipe away his tears. He was in excruciating pain. People had bitten him mercilessly. His back was oh, plowed like a field. His bones were visible. Psalms 22 verse 17 says, His bones were visible. His bones was visible. His flesh was torn. Torn into pieces by those stripes. By the nine, oh, that's uh, each stripe had nine cords. And every 39 stripe, oh, nine times, oh, it will rip the back of Jesus. His flesh was torn into pieces for your healing, for your forgiveness of sin. Beloved brother, beloved sister, shall we stand? Hallelujah. Oh, close your eyes and look to the crucified Jesus who bled for you. He died for you. He loves you. Hallelujah. Oh, his presence will come. His presence will come. His sweet comforting presence will come. I will play this instrument as the, I will play and the Lord Jesus sweet presence will come. The one who wiped away the tear of the blind birth Kamalas. The one who blessed Jabez. The one who lifted Joseph. The love, one who blessed Isaac amidst the fame, famine. He will wipe away your tears. He will remove every burden. Look to him on the cross. He loves you. He has shed all his blood. His blood is flowing for the forgiveness of your sin. For the healing of your body. Hallelujah. Everyone close. Close your eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come, Master. Come, Lord. Jesus. Wonderful. 
comfort, quiet away to miracles for turn the impossible to possible. Yes, His sweet presence, comforting presence, is filling. Sweet Jesus, wonderful Jesus, glorious Jesus. Ask Him, ask Him. Whatever you need, sweet comfort and presence, Philip. Thank you. Wonderful Jesus, glorious Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Loving Jesus, we pray for every brother, every sister. Lay your gentle healing hands and heal them of their pain. Remove every burden, remove every worry, remove every sorrow, every tears be wiped away in the name of Jesus. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we 